Hey, it's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, you guys are going to get some house game, some wholesale game, some investor game, world traveler, entrepreneur game, and at the end of it, you're going to be able to sign up for courses from Gia the House Goddess. She's a real estate investor. She's a wholesaler. She's all those things that I mentioned and more, and she's doing it her way, kind of like Frank Sinatra, but the female young version who's more like the young, I don't even know what category because, you know, Janae, um, Monet, who knows, but she has a vibe and a style all of her own that I think you're going to feel and you'll, have, you'll see the appeal. Gia, what's going on? Good morning. Welcome to the show. Hey, good morning. You caught me in my my um, sleep attire, so fine. And that's part of you know the way the when I saw her on Instagram, I said, "Who is this in a construction hat?" With you know, and then I looked at another picture with you know twenty seven inches down her back and looking good on the uh, construction field, but talking about wholesaling and investing and you know build up. I mean, her web, your website will be in the description box, and I want people to go through that thoroughly, and we'll get into everything that you have on there. But what is so appealing to me is that you did not start. Everyone says, okay, I started with no money. But your website, correct me if I'm wrong, said you started with like $25? Yeah, well, it was $60. Like I literally had $60 in my name. $60 to your name, and we hear these stories, and I can't, you know, talk about them enough. How, to the 14-year-old to the who's listening right now and says, wait, I got $60. How did you turn $60 into thousands of dollars? Um, so I guess wholesaling just gives you a, a way to leverage real estate like never before. Um, and basically, I my back was up against the wall. I had $60 in my name. And I'm like, look, I mean, I'm tired of working this 9 to 5, even though I was working from home. Um, it just was becoming redundant. And um, I wasn't really used to working a 9 to 5. This was kind of a, a new thing, but I was over it. So I was like, look, I stopped clocking into work. And I'm like, I have to do something different. And I know I always had a... I, always, I did real estate before, but I never quite wholesale property. So I was trying to get back into the business and, um, you know, I didn't have the credit. I didn't have the capital. And I'm looking at deals from that perspective of like, okay, maybe I can just buy something, fix it up and flip it. But realistically, I'm like, I don't have the credit for that or the capital. These lenders want me to put damn near $20,000 down and now I have to find contractors and all of that. So I came across the concept of wholesaling and just started doing my research and um, just looking into motivated sellers. So I started writing letters and I wrote a few letters out and a guy called me back. Well, a few, two people called me back. One guy in particular had an, um, property in a really, really hot neighborhood. And he was like, look, I need to sell this really, really quickly. I have five other properties under contract and I'm trying to buy and I want to use this money to buy those. So I'm like, okay, great. I mean, here I am. It's my first deal. Um, he called me back maybe in a week. So I go look at the property. It was in a really, really great neighborhood. Um, to make a long story short, I ended up negotiating him down. That's the key. I negotiated him. He, I think he wanted like 135 at the time. I negotiated him down like $10,000. So essentially that was my money, that 10, the extra $10,000 that I got him down. Um, and I found a buyer. I, I invited two buyers out there and I thought I messed up by doing that. Cause now I'm like, oh shoot, they showed up at the same time. Um, and well, I think he showed up earlier than, than he was supposed to. So now I'm like, oh my God, but it actually turned out to be a really, really good thing because now the buyers looking at are looking at each other and know like, okay, this is serious business. Like I have to be serious about this or else he's going to get the deal over me. So um, that's pretty much what happened. This guy's like, look, gee, I want this property. Um, I'm going to send my earnest money right now to the attorney. Literally right there, he called my attorney, 
sent the money over, wired the money over. He wired like a large deposit. He wired like $10,000 over. So I knew he was serious. He was like, look, we'll close as soon as the title is ready. And he closed, like, I think the title is ready that week. So he literally closed the property in a week. I made $25,000 from $60 to $25,000 really, really quickly. Probably the whole deal took two weeks. Um, yeah, and it was just life changing. From there, I didn't look back. And it was off to the, to the races ever since. That $60 turned to like $1.3 million um, in that first year. Just selling just selling paper, essentially, you know? I had I didn't put any money in the deal. It was just me flipping my contract, essentially. And throughout this interview, you guys are gonna hear, hear me say, you know, you're getting the game, and when you need that hands-on, I wanna do that, I have that money. You go find and get one of her courses so she can show you the details of it. Because I know someone's gonna hear this and say, wow, 25,000, that's more money than I've, you know, some people that's more money than they made last year. And so that would be a great flip for them. When you got that 25, can you talk about what you did with it? Because a, a lot of times in life, we see folks get, you know, large sums of money, and then they have frivolous spending. Uh, they won't put it back in the business because they've already spent it on, you know, a chain, on shoes, on purses. So when you got that $25,000 check, what did you do next? Um, it just it went back in the business, just, you know, um, getting more leads, um, um, spending more on marketing, and, you um, I just repeated the process, did the same thing. I mean, at this time, it was a lot less saturated. So I was getting property like hand over fist. And I was just, yeah, it was crazy. Um, I mean, nobody was really out here doing it like they are now. I feel like you know, a lot more people doing it now. So then it was just like I was getting deals left and right. And I just became kind of like the, the go-to um the go-to girl for real estate investors, builders, and yeah, it was great. Okay, okay, and and this, you know, the, the go-to girl for real estate investors, if you go to Gia the House Goddess, you'll see on her Instagram that she could model, and she's modeling even with her security force. There's a picture on your Instagram with the, the goon squad, the enforcement squad. I'm just curious, um, what was going on with having like security, when in wholesaling or real estate do you need to have security, armed security at that? I mean, we going up in these, like that particular property was abandoned building, it was a four, four unit building. So a lot of times you'll have just people living in there, scragglers living in there. So um, I've been blessed over the years because I went in a lot of bandos, the bandos by myself. Um, so I've been blessed over the years where nobody popped out on me or anything. But in this particular instance, I figured why not bring the crew along since I have to go through this building um, and really check it out. So they just come along, especially if it was in the rougher side of, side of town. So, you know, when I need them, yeah, they Okay, and and I and I love seeing the pick, but I think you're the first one in real estate that I've seen like that. Um, and I said, you know, what type of projects mm -hmm. are these? But it looks good. It looks good enough to. I mean, that's reality TV type. You know, that would be in the opener. Um, you walking down, and you know, you you were you were somewhat casual from what we saw in the pics, but you know, TV wise, you could be in the. Uh, the white fur <laughs> and be like, why would you be in a fur? Because it's TV, you know, it's, it's not real. And, you know, uh, um, Gia also, she doesn't do a lot of interviews or hasn't done a lot of interviews, but she did one with uh, Chris Monroe out of St. Louis. And I think I saw that one yesterday. And I like that one. I'm going to tag that interview because there's some game that he had put in there that I'm not going to repeat. I want you guys to go and listen, binge listen to everything you can with the guest. And so you can get more and more and more game because I got so, so much, so many questions. I spoke with Gia yesterday for an hour and um, I, 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 I could go, I could go all around the place. I could go deep. But what I want to know right now is what are some of your favorite software to use that make your job in life easier in doing business? 
Um, I would say I'm a little old school with that because um, I think I'm very old school with that, which kind of the, the, the newbies that are coming in, because when I started, it was just, it was just orga- doing a lot of things organically. So how I get my leads is organic. I'm not really using any software for that. I mean, I have access to MLS, which a lot of realtors use. Um, so I, I really pull a lot of my information from MLS, from tax records, from um, county county sites. Um, so when it, but I know there's a lot of software out here now, um, you know, like, what do you call it, deal machine and stuff like that, that people use that I really don't have any experience with. Um, so a lot of my stuff is just really organic and, you know, basic, basic food wear. Okay. Um, it, now, is that because, and I know you still um, do cold calling and, is it because that you just like, is it, that's just your system now? Or are you just kind of like, you know, uh, software, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't trust it or I don't want to invest in it because it will make me less personable. What's the reason behind that? I mean, I guess it's like, if it, if it's not broke, why fix it? You know what I'm saying? If I'm still able to generate leads and generate what I need to make an income, you know, based off what I've been using without incurring any extra fees or costs and it's working for me. Then, I mean, that's what I've, that's what I've been doing. However, um, moving forward, as I start growing my team and stuff, you know, I'll definitely be listening out to like maybe what some of the stuff that they're using or that they heard of, because um, I do get a lot of people that are, that are in the business that use certain things. I'm definitely open to it. Um, you know, however, however, we can utilize software information to make our jobs easier and so be it. Um, but it's just been a lot of stuff that I, that I use is very organic. Um, and it works. Um, like soon I'm going to be doing like a, I'm going to do a class or a course on how to fly for dollars, for instance. And I use like everybody drives for dollars and nobody's talking about flying for dollars. Like why I want to drive. I don't, always want to drive around all day and I don't have to because I know how to fly for dollars but a lot of people don't know how to do that um and I'm using I'm using software for that of course but um it's really organic stuff that I've learned along the way okay okay I I saw one last year and I was I, I and it was on uh Max Maxwell's show and I said he was like, this is game changing. And I'm like, what is this? And then I see every uh, other people talking about like property stream, w- which basically gives you the comps and gives you all the information. I, I had to do um, a trial on it because I was like, I'm liking this just even for finding, you know, homes to live in because I'm, I, you know, I'm relocating in a few months. And so fly for dollars. You guys don't have to, you know, hit her up right now and say, I want to sign up for your, 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 your email list so I can get that because at, when you first said that, I'm like, uh-oh, that sounds like Spirit Airlines or something. <laughs> you, know, you, you, you might be a dollar, but you know at the end of the flight, it's, it's going to cost you more than the regular flight would, would cost yeah. you. Yeah, that's what it feels like, too. It's real dope. It feels like you just get in a plane and have a bird's eye view of whatever city. You could, be, you could go to any city you want to. I could be right here, and I could go to... Um, Miami and find some deals there. May it be land, property, whatever. So yeah, it's a really dope, dope concept that I'm gonna start um, implementing. And also, my website is changing. Um, Gita House got us there now, but I'm working on. I have a group called Flipping Friends, and that's gonna be a lot more of the student stuff, the courses. I'm gonna be teaching. I'm really, I'm really about to just really let my secrets out because I haven't really given that side of the game away. But I'm, I'm ready to just. Um, I'm ready to just expand and, and grow and just go into some different avenues as well. So I know in order to do that, you gotta you gotta give the game up sometimes. So I'm gonna be doing a lot of stuff on tax lean, tax lean. Um, um I'm gonna be giving people access to one of my mentors who's really dope. Um, and just, you know, this this game gets deep. Like people don't realize how how deep real estate gets, how 
how many moving pieces there are, especially when you start getting creative and when you start really, really trying to dig in and find those really profitable deals. You know what I'm saying? I don't touch anything that's listed on MLS. You know, I'm looking to create, I'm trying to find the messiest deal that I can get for the best price because somebody else might not be able to figure out that deal because it's messy, you know? So I'm going to get in there and I'm going to figure it out because that's how I'm, I've been making the best profit. Okay. Are you doing deals um, strictly in Atlanta, Georgia? Are you, you know, all across the board? um in the, in the states wherever you can um, um right now i'm in atlanta however my vision is i know i have followers from all over so i see myself being in their states as well so if they come on board and they're like hey i'm in chicago or i'm in texas and i want to do this so i'm in well actually yeah i have a student i have some students in ohio so if they come on board I've, i'm essentially helping them there too so um, and then it turns, it's, that's how it turns into a kind of like a virtual situation where I'm able to do deals in these other states um, through them. Okay. You know, and I'm, when doing the research and, and listening, I, 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 you, like a fellow author that I grew up on listening to, um, he happens to be the um, chief executive in charge of this country. And I know you've read you know, Trump's books, you know, from reading his books, which, you know, people make it controversial. Oh, you read Trump's books and say, those are good books. They put a lot of game in you. Well, how, how do you feel about, you know, your, your taxes and, you know, the current administration politics and, you know, someone who I think you had said, you know, yeah, that's one of my, 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 my mentors in real estate. How do you feel about Trump? <clears throat> Um, Trump, I feel like he's a good businessman. I mean, I don't really get too caught up in the whole politics of things because I know it just gets, gets very convoluted. But when you look at business wise, he's a good businessman. So, I mean, he's good for business people and potentially bad for poor people. Mm. So, I mean, but he's, he's, he's definitely made a lot of strides in terms of business, in terms of like the tax reforms and stuff like that. So, I mean, Trump, 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 Trump fans are saying, see, you, you see, you see blacks for Trump. And then others are saying, who, who is this girl? She, that she made too much money and she's gone crazy. But I, I agree with you. Um, I don't, I, I've worked with these politicians, so I don't necessarily trust any politician anywhere because they're politicians. I'm concerned about, you know, the bottom line and um, whatnot. So I, I get it. And uh, it's a beautiful thing that you don't have to follow. You don't have to be the sheep because when you're young and black or just black, they expect you, you're a Democrat. You know, people will argue with that. Nah, you, you're a Democrat. And I say, I'm an independent. I'm voting my interest. So I love to, I love to hear that independent uh, and you're a New Yorker, so you might be a little biased too, you know, to a fellow <laughs> New Yorker. You might get something that others don't get. Now, let's just is like, we're going to go deep into the Africa. Because if you guys go again to her Instagram, don't just get caught up on, you know, the, the first couple of pictures, go all the way down, hit the middle, and see that she's been to Africa. And when, when looking at it, you, you didn't just go to the city. You went to the village. Talk about your trip to Africa. What made you go and how did you go? Was it a tour? Did you just, you know, find a deal and you got wow. lost in Africa? How did you go? <laughs> so Africa, man, it was like, I later, I later found out that it was the year to return. Um, ironically, I didn't even know. But I guess, hey, I was in, I was in alignment and in tune. So, <laughs> but Africa. It was crazy. I just like, I literally just went. I trip, I'm not a good planner, so if I'm going somewhere, I'm booking it the week before, and I'm just like, I'm going. I'll figure this shit out when I get there, which eh, could be a good thing, could be a bad thing, but it typically works for me, and it works. So to be like really, really honest about Africa, like a lot of people are gonna think I'm crazy, but oh well. <laughs> um, so. I had just, 
I just closed the deal and I'm like, you know what? I need to do something different. I need to like, I need to get away real quick. And this this guy started talking to me on Instagram and I see he was, he, he built boats and he lived in Tanzania. And I was like, wow, it's beautiful out there. So I just started researching Tanzania and I'm like, wow, wow. Like, and I'm like, yeah, I want to come out there. He was like, okay. But he was like in Finland or something. So um, I was like, look, I just booked the ticket. I said, look, I'm coming out there in two weeks and I'll be there. Like, I ain't booking no hotels and I researched no hotel. I'm like, I'm gonna figure it out. I need you to help me figure it out. You speak Swahili, you speak the language, I'm coming. So I, I had um, also hooked up with one of my, my friends and I'm like, look, I'm going to Tanzania in like two weeks, come out there. She was like, well, I'll meet you out there. I could come out there like a week after. I'm like, all right, cool. That way I won't be out there by myself totally. So but the first week I was there pretty much by myself. Um, he flew in from Finland, he met me there. And it was a thing of, of course, you know, I'm an attractive woman, but I'm like, look, this ain't no vacation or none of that. So like, you get that straight. You gonna have your hotel room. I'm gonna have my hotel room, and you know what I'm saying. He, I guess, he was all excited in his mind. Like, <laughs> I'm like, you know, people think I'm crazy as hell. Like, you don't even know this guy. Like, how you just? But he ends up being a very, very nice guy, very mild mannered, very respectful. Um, he had to try. He tried me a few times. You know, I to put him back in his place, put him in the brother's own. Like, look, you know what I'm saying. You can't do nothing for me. Like. <laughs> let's let's keep let's let's keep it cool. So I'm like, look, I want you to take me around. I want to I wanted to really look at the into the the resources of Africa, the culture, the just everything. And you can't do that unless you're with a local that knows Africa, that knows Tanzania. And um, I'm like, look, take me to the gold mine. I want to see I want to see the stones. Y'all are known for Tanzanite. Take me to the block. So I went to the block. I'm looking at the stones from rubies to tanzanite to aquamarine to citrine. I mean, they're pulling everything out there. Socks. I'm like, oh my God, this is beautiful. Like, this is crazy. Then we go, I literally travel. I went, I went to a few of the safaris. Um, we rented a car, um, drove through the Serengeti, just drove through Morongoro. That was crazy as hell because the car that we rented was not adequate enough. It wasn't a safari vehicle. So <laughs> we're in this truck and the shit is sliding like it's on ice because I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I'm literally scared for my life, driving through the Serengeti, looking at freaking all these animals go by us and we're sliding. So I'm literally like in the back praying the whole damn time. And then, um, cause we're in this old, I guess, road run. I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know you're supposed to have a safari truck and we're in this bullshit truck that's just not built the road. So ends up, um, I met with the Maasai, stopped along the way at the Serengeti, met with the Maasai tribe. That was amazing just to see how they live, see how they're nomadic, how they just live off the land. They only eat meat, blood, and milk. Like to just go in their houses, see the school. Like that was just an amazing experience. Um, so the whole time we're traveling, mind you, we're, we're on our way to the gold mines. I didn't know that this was a, this, I'm thinking, I didn't realize that this, this was a 12 hour drive, mind you. So I'm literally drove and we're stopping along the way, going to different hotels. It was, it was a real journey. Um, we end up falling in a ditch finally. Like we were, we were sliding so bad. The guys in the um, safari trucks are riding by us like, boom, fast. And we like, so when a guy pulls up, he's like, look, you got to drive faster. I'm like, what? Faster? Like, how? Like, we're about to fucking flip over. I'm, we're already going like this. But he's like, you got to drive faster to, I guess, keep up with the turbulence of the rocks or whatever. I don't know. But I'm like, oh, my God. We end up falling in the ditch. The freaking, the shots were done. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I'm we're in the middle of Africa. I just watched the elephant pass us. We just <laughs> fell in the ditch. I'm like, yo, as soon as we fell in the ditch, I'm like, yo, it is over. Like, what now? But when I tell you, it's like the angels be right, it was right there at every time. So we fell in the ditch. They got out. I'm like, fuck. They pushed us out the ditch pretty easily. I'm like, thank God. Then we go to the, like, literally five minutes away, we in the, we in some village town. And he, my friend hop out, a mechanic come up, 
They're like, look, you want this shocks, the cheaper shocks or the good shocks? I'm like, shit, y'all got shocks right here in the village. <laughs> like, I see a boots running around. I'm like, oh my God, thank God. Give us the best shocks you got. Yeah. Fuck it. Like, we still got like hours to drive. I'm like, I'm mad. I'm cursing at this kid. I'm like, yo, what? Why? Like, I want to leave. Boom. Finally, we, we end up getting to where we were supposed to go. Um, had to take a ferry over. It was like a whole journey. We had to take the car on a ferry. Um, got the shocks fixed. Now we're at the gold mine. That was a whole nother journey. The roads are terrible. That was a big eye opening experience as well. I don't know how deep you want me to go in this, but um, go 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 deep because this experience <laughs> is a real experience. This isn't your. Very few people are going to have this experience when going to Africa. Tell me it did. You know, it just opened your eyes to a whole different thing. And it's still a kudo patata. You know, it, it, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's everything is you're here. You survived and you can tell this story. So no, keep going. So, I mean, at one point we had stops in this area and it was like Brooklyn. It was like, what? So now I'm finally out the car. I'm like, okay. It's like. Literally looked like Brooklyn. It's a bunch of lights all around. We were in Mwanza. And um, mind you, I probably stayed at like numerous hotels. They were all pretty nice, like surprisingly, um, just to be like local hotels on the way. Um, but this particular area, we in Mwanza. It's clubs all around, like little bars. I'm starving. I'm like, look, we got to go get some to eat, something to eat guys selling street food and there's a club right there um who finally we went to I think Gata and that's where the gold mines were and that was just like a whole nother world in itself and I, all I'm thinking about is this damn car because I'm like okay we already bust some shocks and the car was like breaking down on the way then the freaking um the AC went out and I'm like oh god so my, the roads are just terrible. Um, and where we were at, Europe has a 40-acre gold mine there. And I heard they've been there for like years and years. And what was mind-boggling to me, I'm like, okay, they got this gold mine. It's gold everywhere. But I'm watching little kids bathing in a pond, like getting their water out of a pond. Why? Like, why hasn't the government, why hasn't anybody stepped in and at least fix the roads, like the roads to the gold mine are terrible. But here, Europe has a 40-acre gold mine in it. They haven't fixed the roads. They haven't given water to the community. I'm like, this is like crazy to me. So the gold mine is huge. Like, like it's a gold mine for locals. So you literally go in and it's like everywhere. You got to be careful where you walk because there is a hole. Mm. Like, literally. And what they're doing is because they don't have real equipment, they literally just dig blindly. So they can dig and they dig down, dig, dig, and they got to go like 30 feet into the earth. They go 30 feet into the earth. Sometimes there's gold, sometimes there's not gold. So a lot of times they just got to up and abandon a hole and go dig another hole. So there's holes everywhere, like 30 foot holes that you could literally, if you ain't paying attention, your ass is done. Wow. So, um, and um, yeah, like they just one of one of my friend's friend had an actual gold mine there, and he showed me all. He showed us around, showed us the process of you know just looking at the whole process with the locals, seeing how they dig thirty feet into the earth with little hand tools. Like when I tell you, hand tools, thirty yeah. feet. I'm like, whoa! I'm talking about rock. I'm like, how are y'all doing this? This is crazy. But that's how they that's how they make their living. Um, there'd be a team of them. They won't eat, they won't sleep, or they might just eat rice until they strike gold. When they strike gold, they sell it, they divvy up the profits. Um, it was just it was it was very, very eye-opening experience. You know, you have kids that are not going to school, they just sit in there waiting for their parents. Their parents might just be crushing rocks all day. Because it's a whole process that they have to go through to get the gold. Um, so that was just, that was just a very eye-opening experience just to see how people live and just to see the hustle. Like, it's a marketplace. So it's a lot of people, very busy. 
there's no horses out there. Their horses are donkeys. They carry us stuff on donkeys. I'm watching the donkey break down. I'm watching them hitting donkeys. The donkey's not moving because the donkey's God. overloading with a whole bunch of stuff. I'm like, oh my God, like this is crazy. How many how many businesses did you think of when you were out there and said, wait, I could get into that. I could get into that. Oh, I could supply that. Man, tons of stuff, tons of stuff. Because, um, I mean, I went to three places. Like a three-month period, I went from I went from Tanzania to Kenya to Zambia. So just looking at the different aspects of Africa and the different cultures, it's like so many different types of businesses that I was thinking about. Like, wow, yeah. They Did you write them down? Um, I have a mental note of them. <laughs> no, no, no. We got we to gotta write it down and make the vision plain and write it down. Um, and, and, and then it will, you know, for, I know for me on the whiteboard, it bothers me if things haven't got done because those mm-hmm. things is more than money. It's, it's money, but it's, it's purpose, it's profit. And if we don't do it, then the Chinese will do it all. And then we'll wonder why Africa will be just, you know, China times two. And people say, oh, the Chinese are here. Well, did, what did you invest? What did you put down? What did you try to link up with a partner out there and say, hey, let's do this business and this is going to provide for both of our families. And I have a way for you not to steal because we're going to do it this way. And, you know, this is what. And so I write the vision down and make it plain, all of them, because you don't know what will hit and what you'll do first. But I, that sounds that's book worthy. And you already know you got to be jotting something down on, on on pieces of paper, if not daily, weekly, because that experience in itself is a book that somebody needs to read to be inspired. You know, there's a lot of uh, depression and, you know, now with this coronavirus, people are worried about where I think some of us have immunity to, um, you know, it's, it's, you, you got to put these things to give folks hope. Um, are you planning on going back anytime soon? Um, I, I am. I am. I was actually supposed to go back a few weeks ago. I was going with a friend of mine and his dad passed. So I halted the trip. However, everything happens for a reason because we would have been out there not knowing that. I was going to Zambia. I have some investments out in Zambia currently. And um, not knowing that they are they're going through a crisis right now they started gassing villages Mm -hmm. and they are sucking their blood out with syringes so like they're literally gassing households schools once the people are unconscious they're getting their blood sucked out um i'm hearing some cases where they're taking their organs um but yeah it's it's really bad so like local the locals are scared like it's it's crazy so and it's to the point where even the like my friend that's out there he's like look they're closing down the schools like everybody's terrified because they just gassed a school and one of the kids came out and said that he was being paid um they're being paid per liter of blood that they collect so it's i'm glad i wasn't out there because yeah, because even driving through the village right now, if they see you driving through the village, they think that you one of the suspects. So the villagers will stone you to death or just drag you out the car and kill you thinking that you one of the suspects trying to gas them. So it's crazy. They've been out there killing innocent people. And Zambia is known to be a very peaceful yeah. country. So uh-huh. this is like very, very unheard of for them. It's like, it's, it's crazy. Is this like a um, a terrorist group? What what is this? I haven't heard this. I got friends out there. I haven't heard this this one. I don't know. They're saying like it's businessmen and politicians. And I someone when I did make a post about it, and they told me they had they asked me have I ever heard of something? I gotta look this up because it's a it's a movie that actually came out in the eighties that talks about this. I guess it's some kind of um, element in the blood that the elite take and it makes them like it gets them high but it keeps them young 
Okay, so th- this is on some um, this is witchcraft or um, for the the juju. <laughs> That's um, I, um, I, I don't I don't want to scare folks. What I will say this: there is not a positive story that the news likes to run because that's not what makes news money. And I'm, I'm seeing right now on my thing, okay, 566 people arrested for gassing. In every, especially African country, there's going to be negative news. And that's why, you know, we stopped going. Um, I, I only walk by faith. I'm from, you know, an area when you came up in the 80s, you hear the stuff, boop, 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 go off and then I'd go run off into the suburbs right and 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 people think oh in the suburbs it's all good every place has issues so I I'd actually like when they say don't go to Mexico that's what my family and I that's when we go to Mexico because it's like I I gotta go because I know the cartel's not checking for me I also know who I'm protected by so it's kind of like if you've ever seen um the last king of Scotland and any of me and said they can't do anything to me pretty much. You know, what's going to happen to you is going to happen to you. Rather it's here, there, whatever. Right. But the, 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 I don't, I just don't live in fear. I can't live in fear. Plus I protect myself wherever I, I go. And I really, you know, when you're out of the country, you get this freeing feeling like nobody's like nobody cares or nobody's watching me. Or if they're watching me, I'm not at harm's way of the police or the military or, you know, the, the, the evils, especially in Africa. I just feel at peace. Yeah, definitely. I know, like, yeah, anywhere I go, I'm, I'm protected. And it showed me we just being in Africa, the truck breaking down and all that, because on the way back, the engine blew. Like, it was like, but we were like, I'm like, fuck, where are we? The engine blew. I'm Watching a Maasai tribe pass me, and it was a Maasai on a, on a motorcycle. I've never seen a Maasai on a motorcycle. <laughs> oil. I'm telling my friend, ain't no oil gonna fix this shit, okay? That engine is done. Like, y'all wasting your time with this oil. Y'all need to call a tow truck or something. But we were like 45 minutes from the city. Boom, the guy, the guy whose truck, who rented us a truck, pulled right up. I was like, you know what? I'm out. My homegirl had finally made it. She was waiting for me. I had introduced her to some, to some guys or whatever. So they pulled up. They came and got me. I took all my shit out the car. I was like, I'm gone. I'm, I'm done. I'm done. Like, this, this trip just tired me out. I'm trying to turn up now. And after that, me and my homegirl went to we turn up from there. So yeah, it's like always everything works out in divine order as long as you move, move in faith and not fear. And that's been my life, for real, like. Just go yeah. with it. Bring it you know? How many, how, how much for the, for the listener saying Africa sounds nice, but um, I heard it was expensive. How much was your, your round trip ticket? Um, I booked last minute. So I booked really last minute. And I think I booked, I want to kind of say like, I'd be booking one way. <laughs> like I okay. think I booked the one way and it was like, um, I don't remember because, like I said, I went to Africa three times. But I know a lot of times I book one way is maybe like $1,500 one way. I might catch another ticket for like 700 coming back. So something like that, maybe around like 2500 So it, it, that's, and that's, a, that's a great price, especially last minute. There's deals on, this is not a commercial, but there's deals out online where I have clients who go, you know, often, and they can find a deal for under a thousand dollars. Sometimes I've seen them, and they've sent them to me five hundred and fifty dollars round trip, and I'm like, okay, oh, okay, this this is cool. So, yeah, hey, y'all, you save your money. Don't buy Coach. Don't buy the Jordans. There's your your, your ticket to something life changing. I want to ask you this, and we ask all of the uh, the guests, um, what is your community give back that you are doing, or that you want to do in the future? Right. So I bought some land in Tanzania and um, more like the ocean front. And I, I made an agreement with the village to, I have to do something for the community. So um, I want to put it, my plan is to do like a, put a school there. Um, and since I am getting into the, the birthing, holistic birthing aspect of things, potentially maybe do some kind of birthing center experience. It's definitely, definitely a school. Um, 
I have a friend of mine too that is going to be doing is going to be doing a lot of donating and a lot of corporate fundraising, um, donating, getting textbooks and clothes and all of that. I mean, in the village, I had a really good experience with the kids and just got to see how they live and what they needed, what they were lacking, and I really want to impact the youth there because, yeah, like the youth is the future and they got it hard. Like they got it so hard it's like it's crazy crazy they they have it you know it's, it's a different type of living because if you you ask them uh, i mean a lot of those kids are so um you know if you can go to school i think the elementary and the middle school education there even not some of the high school is is more advanced than what we have and you can see that in foreigners when they're in class with you and you're like, hey, how you know this already? Because they already did it. In, what you're learning in college, they did in middle school. And and my wife was like that. I was like, how you know? How you know this already? You know? Mm-hmm. And it's like, man, this is like remedial stuff to us. But you bought this land, and um, I know you have a partner out there. Again, you guys got to check out our other interviews. You found a partner. Um, for the folks who say, okay, so she has money, you know, you always got the haters, right? And mm-hmm. people are gonna say, oh, well, she has money, so she can do that. Can you talk about the range of, how, you know, of the prices of land that you you saw? Because I tell people, you, you how, how much do you have? You can buy some land for the price of some some Nike shoes, some expensive Yeezys, whatever you're into. And they're like, no, you can't. I'm like, you can if you know where you're looking. But, you know, there are service fees and, and different things. This is a service that, you know, can be provided to you. So how, what it was that range? Um, or did you just spend, you know, a million dollars and say, hey, I'm going to buy this land oceanfront? Um, no, it was more so, um, yeah, I was just looking at oceanfront land and, um, really across from Zanzibar. Zanzibar is like already developed, built up beautiful restaurants, beaches, clubs, but on the other side is not developed yet. Um, they're bringing in a new bridge. So I feel like soon a lot of development is about to start coming in, um, because of that bridge. So... I was just really looking on the ocean period. I've always wanted to live by the ocean and I've always um, wanted to do some kind of resort um, on the ocean. So that's kind of my vision, like bringing, like, let's go back to Africa. I got a resort here. Let's go back. Because even when I was there, a lot of the locals, the local guys that I was with, that was taking us around. He was like, yo, y'all need to bring some black people over here. Why no black Americans ever come over here and visit like that? It's all these white people, all these foreigners. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, like black people don't be coming. So I'm like, okay, that's interesting. So, but as far as the price point, um, what I pay, I got six acres on the beach. I want to say I paid about, I don't know. I've been doing so much stuff and 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 their money. Um, I want to say I paid about seventeen thousand. Okay, for six for six acres and it's undeveloped, right? Yeah. And and anybody who says seventeen thousand, that's a lot of money. No, that's a lot of money to you. But when you're talking about acreage, it, that's you know that's. Um, you find some land out here for the, for that cheap, you know, that's ocean front. And then we, you know, we can talk. So that's, that's a, you, you, you got your acreage, you have your plan. And I just, I love to hear stories like that because you, your story, there's a tribe of people. And I, I, you know, I already told you, I want you to meet some people because there's people all over doing some things. And when you start this YouTube channel of yours, it's going to just fit right into that mold of that tribe. You're going to say, Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not even weird. This is what people are doing. Like there's folks who are, I'm never coming home and doing businesses on Amazon, you know, selling uh, the shea butters and the different things. And so you have so many ideas in you. 
mm-hmm. and you you buy in one ways, <laughs> you're just gonna say, tell your baby, hey, come over here. Um, I'm I'm not coming back anytime soon. So you have your child, you know, come and 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 isn't it nice to see kids playing outside? Yeah, it is with nothing, just making the best of what they have, like. Right? Um, yeah. Yeah. So you guys have gotten the game. You got the game. If you want to see more of Gia, the house goddess, you got to go on her website. You got to follow her and just don't hit her up. Invest in the courses, learn. So you too can be on this path. She's building her, her own, you know, tribe. You hear a whole new website coming with the flipping friends, the book documentaries, you know, I've already let her know I'm going to be bothering her because the information has to get out there. Your story is unique and someone's going to hear it that only you can reach and change their life, even if you never meet them. So I thank you, Gia, for giving the oh, game. Also, I do want to add because mm-hmm. this is something that I don't really put out there too much. I'm, I've gotten more comfortable with it, but I realized that um, it really it helps a lot of people because I had someone just recently hit me up and they're like, hey, I have a certain amount of money um, and I want to just invest. And I'm like, well, you need to learn the knowledge. Don't just throw your money out there saying you want to invest. You need to learn so you can repeatedly take that money and make money with it. And they're like, well, I'm a felon and I didn't think I could get into real estate. So I'm a felon. You know, that's, that was my story as well. I kind of, I know we didn't talk, talk about that too much, but um, I did I did a little bid myself. Um, and I just tell people don't let you don't let that hinder you. You know what I'm saying? You're like your past is your past is what makes you, what molds you. And whether you're a felon, you're not a felon, but whatever your past is, move on from your past and know that as long as you have a, a strong determination to win, that's all, that's all it takes. And you just stick to that and determination and consistency. And that's that's real real talk. I mean. The, uh, people tell me I can't get a passport because I have that. I said, I, I had that too. Yes, you can. <laughs> you know, oh, I can't get into that because I did that. Legal trouble in America, um, especially when you are, even if you have money, because I'll be honest with you, I, I tried to get into the lobbying uh, business and someone told me that, you know, they, they want to go through your record. They And one of my guys, he jokingly said, you don't have any felonies though. <laughs> I said, huh? He's like, to be a lobbyist, you know, you need at least one because you're going to get at least two. Um, and yeah, <laughs> if you if you look up lobbyists, they are notorious because they're fall people at the end of the day. And they're playing in gray areas of politics, which is big business. And we see it with uh, this administration right here that because you're friends with somebody, someone says you did a deal that wasn't legal and lobbyists are under a lot of rules. And I know we were going to close out, but that I, I want to talk. I want you to educate the people real quick on why you're not a real estate investor. Like, because I know you have said, you know, that would put you under, like, it would lock you up, like, you know, as far as what you can and can't do. So why oh, are you not an agent? Agent, yeah. Why are you not an agent, and you don't want your license? Um. Well, I know when I first started my journey, I read a book. And the guy basically, he made a lot of sense. He was like, you know, I would never get a real estate license because then you kind of open yourself up to more liabilities because in scrutiny, because once you have a license, you have to pretty much conform to the rules of that license and regulation. So a realtor is governed by, you know, the, the board, the board of real estate, the real estate commission. And if you're not following their guidelines and rules and their ethics and their codes and you step out of that, um, like as an investor, you know, we're able to do what we want to do for the most part, as long as it's lawful and legal. Um, But as a real estate agent, for example, as an investor, I'm looking for the best deal possible. I'm looking for, um, so when I'm talking to, when I'm talking to homeowners, um, you know, I'm looking for an under market value property. As a real estate agent, you have to represent that client and make sure they're selling their property for market value. Um, so for me, I don't want to typically buy at market value, but I don't have to disclose to the seller like, hey, your, your property is really worth this amount of dollars. 
You know what I'm saying? I can basically come in there and say, hey, look, this is what I want to offer you. Because yeah. I have to do X amount of work. You know, I can't. I, but as a real estate agent, you know, you have to come in there and make sure that you adhere to those rules and regulations at the board that the real estate commission set before you. And one of those is making sure that that, that homeowner sells their property for, for maybe four or above market value. As an investor, that would kill me. You know, I can't buy properties above market value or at market, at the height of the market. I can't do that. I have to do creative deals. So it just allows, it just gives you more flexibility um, and more options. As a real estate investor, I'm not limited to a commission. I can make what I want based on what I negotiate. As a real estate agent, you're capped at a commission. You know, so... Yeah, a lot of different pros and cons when it comes to that. And shoot, if I was a real estate agent at the time when I got in trouble, <laughs> I probably would have got a whole lot more time just because of that. You know, so okay, was like, this was like ten years ago. About this was old nine when I really started my career when I first got in trouble. Um, but yeah. Okay, no, that, that's that's good game. And folks, I'm not going to let you get any more until you go visit the site, sign up, counseling, mentoring, all that. You can hit her and up for Jada all that. JadaHouseGuidance.com. I'll be switching over to Flipping Friends where it's going to be like a full mentorship platform. You're going to have access to my mentor. I'm going to be doing a lot of tax deed stuff. A lot. I'm giving my secrets away. How I get properties for $1,000. How I get properties for $1,000 and sell them for $70,000. And just crazy, just crazy stuff that I do. Unorthodox stuff that's perfectly legal and lawful. And you could do it too. And build wealth. That's really about building wealth, building generational wealth. And that's what our people lack. If you look at the numbers and the statistics, a lot of us, you know, we don't own real estate and wealth has been built on real estate. Um, you know, wealth has been the backbone of a lot of families. I mean, real estate has been the backbone of a lot of families in the world, some of the world's richest people. So as you know, we really need to take heed and start building wealth through real estate, not just go out here and buy a pretty house because you have an emotional attachment. No, it's about looking at the numbers and knowing that you make your money when you buy, period. You make your money when you buy in this business, not when you sell, and knowing how to buy. You know what I'm saying? Knowing how to t buy your first property and make it be an investment and make that property you know, be the start of you building wealth for you and your family and be the start of creating financial freedom for you and your family, not just buying a pretty house because, oh, you know, I just want a home. I don't want to pay rent. No, as real estate investors, we, the saying is, you know, rent where you live and what is it? Own what you rent and rent where you live. Yeah, um, yeah. Yeah, like, so that, that says it all. That says a lot. You know, people get caught up in this home ownership thing, but it's about, owning a home the right way because at the end of the bank at the end of the day the bank essentially owns that property anyway until you pay it off so if that's the case you might as well know how to leverage the bank to its full potential you know that's, so that's, right. the, beauty, that's the beauty of real estate message that's 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 good game y'all like share subscribe Gia, be blessed you know